everybody, and welcome to another series of Front Runners. Today, we're going to be discussing great online profiles with Joe Taylor, who is Director of Audiences at Ramba, the dance, dance company in London. And we have several EUIO musicians here today to join the discussion. We have Serena, we have Caroline, we have Francisca, Jacopo, and Sophia. So thank you very much for joining us. We have a jam board. If you see, I've put the link in the chat. And as we go on, I'll take some notes uh, on the discussion. And please also feel free to go on the jam board and add your own thoughts. We'd like this to be as interactive as possible. So please, everyone, just pile on there and add things as we go along. So I think, Joe, without further ado, I shall hand over to you. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Helen. Hello, everyone. It's really nice to see your faces from different parts of the world. Um, welcome. Um, this is your profile, as I know it to date. We'll see what your profile looks like elsewhere. Um, I've had a little look at some of your Instagrams. Um, I thought what we do with this session is um, have a fairly open discussion. So um, I previously did a session for front runners, which is on your website or your internet or whatever you call that, um, which is a much sort of longer presentation about these issues. But what I thought I sorry I said issues as if this is going to be a big problem it, about the questions that we're going to talk about. So what I thought I'd do in this time is give a quick appraisal of what I think the key strategic considerations might be and then um, open it up to a bit of a conversation because while I might have some useful strategic provocations and questions you also might have advice you can give one another from your own experiences I think it's useful to operate as a group rather than um, anything other than that and um, before we do just it'd be useful to have a quick um, kind of overview of where you're up to the people on the group at the moment um, in terms of your online profile. How many of you currently have a website for professional purposes? Do you want to raise your hands? I know I've had a look at yours. Yes. OK, a couple of you. Um, and do the others of you expect to have a website at some point in the future? Or do you think that you'll be using different channels and a website might not be relevant to you? Well, I'm, th I'm thinking about a website, but not for now. Maybe in a few years. Maybe. In the future, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, how about Sophia Serena? Uh, I wasn't really thinking about the website, yeah. but right. um, I'm interested in the topic. Yeah. No, I'm not being okay. useful and uh, maybe more different channels than the yeah. website. Okay. Um, Jacopo and Serena? Yes, Serena. Yeah. yeah, I never think about it, but uh, maybe in the future. Okay. I do have a website, but uh, I made it a uh, very long time ago and I should uh, up update it. Mm -hmm. No, I was just interested because by and large, um, people are using websites less and are using social more. Um, <laughs> um, so I just wondered where, where you were at as a group um, with that. Um, I think it's an interesting thing. Those of you saying I might have one later, that's probably the right answer is Jacopo has just highlighted it's sometimes a bit of more trouble than it's worth having a website if it's not up to date. And if it's not where you're engaging, I wouldn't recommend trying to manage more channels than you've actually got capacity to and and be uh, realistic about who's going to visit your website versus who's going to find you on the social channels where they are already being social. Um, and then my second question was around which platforms you're currently using on social. I, Instagram is seems to be, from what I know about you, where you are at the moment. Um, do any of you use TikTok in a personal or professional capacity? No. And is that something you've considered? Is it something I could persuade you to consider? I think we've got a sort of terrified look on people's faces at the idea of using TikTok at the moment. Um, OK, and how about LinkedIn, Facebook? I'm also almost not bothering to talk about X or Twitter anymore, but anyone who wants to challenge me on that, feel free. Well, on fa and fa Facebook also for me. But... You're on Facebook as well. OK. Yeah, I also on Facebook. You're on and is that personally or professionally or and that is something we'll come on to discuss about 
whether you have a personal versus professional or yeah we'll talk about that later at the moment is that professional or it's both because it, it was uh, personal and then it became uh, it's evolved a bit yeah is that the same for you Serena? yes it's a, it's a personal profile and then i just post things about my everyday life as a musician yeah cool and that is something we should come on to talk about is that is a big decision that you're going to need to make you may have already made it but do i have two sets of accounts do i have one account what's the implication of making that choice but we can come back to that um okay instagram is where most engagement is happening at the moment certainly for romba um we have a lot of followers on facebook i think that might be um a red herring though because we don't get as much engagement on facebook as we do on instagram instagram lends itself much better to what we do and that's where well we post on linkedin and other channels we've stopped posting on x for reasons um brand association apart from anything um and instagram is where all of our effort goes it's also got the most useful um it's the most useful platform in terms of being able to see what gets the greatest engagement spoiler alert reels that is all you need to do uh, reels is where it's at but i would say um do consider tiktok um don't dismiss it without thinking about it. Um, I was talking to somebody who works for Google the other day, and they were not prepared to confirm or deny whether Google was going into partnership with TikTok, but they said they wouldn't be surprised. So I think that tells you what they weren't allowed to tell me, actually. Um, reason for that being is that um, a large proportion of the youngest generation don't use Google anymore. That when they want to find out what's on or find out about something, they go straight to TikTok. So there's a big share of search going on there. Um, and I think that's why I would keep an eye on it. I wouldn't say jump and act, well, literally do a TikTok jump. I wouldn't say do that now, um, unless you have the appetite to do that. Um, and I'm not an expert in TikTok. Romba joined TikTok a few weeks ago. We have something like 600 followers. It's tiny, tiny, tiny at the moment compared to tens of thousands of followers on Instagram. Um, okay, so that's your useful starting point. I think we'll focus on Instagram, but actually I'm going to go zoom out to be a lot more strategic and talk about things that's not to do with channel specific. It's to do with um, your strategies. So... We're starting to think about your online presence as an artist, and we'll tease out where that line crosses over between you as a person and you as an artist, um, and how comfortable you feel with those being merged. Another spoiler is I, I have friends who are musicians, and they I've had friends who've done both very successfully. Um, so it, it's, it's really a personal choice. Um, and because you are you and you are unique and special and you are nobody else, I can't actually tell you many of the answers for how you want to have an online presence, but I can help you ask yourself some of the big questions and think about some of the pitfalls and some of the opportunities that this um, might give you. Um, I'm going to start with a suggestion, and forgive me, this is probably basics, you know this, that I would be careful that you're not thinking about your online profile um, and your online presence as, don't, don't consider it as a way of advertising yourselves. Um, I consider it as a way of making meaningful connections. Advertising is when you um, push messages out and you promote things. Um, but social media, the clue is in the name. It is there to be social. It is there to make connections. Consider your profile and your presence as a way to broker relationships, which is a much more useful thing to you than just being adverts. Um, a quote I, I hardly ever leave out because I find it so useful. There's um, a person called Simon Sinek, who is a leadership coach and an author and a public speaker. He's I think he's a really inspiring person. It's, uh, there are two ways to influence human behavior. You can inspire it or you can manipulate it. Both of those methods will get you the sale, but only one of them will generate a lifetime of loyalty. 
So the point that he's saying here is um, use inspiration as opposed to marketing manipulations. Use yourself, what makes you special, what makes you inspiring, what makes people want to be um, affiliated to you, connected to you, have something to do with you, learn about you, find out about you, inspire people to want to be interested, to be interested and in, in you, as opposed to thinking that what you're doing is marketing and using um, manipulative um, methods. And I say this really comfortably with somebody who's had the word marketing in my job title for about 20 something years. Um, so I'm not saying marketing is an evil thing, but there's a difference between inspiring people and manipulating them. Um, so with that said, so if we're saying that our profile is there to help us broker meaningful, positive relationships, relationships happen between two or more parties. Um, so those parties are you. And therefore, we're going to think about how you want to come across, what you want to share about yourself, what might be attractive, what might be uh, beneficial, what might further your cause, what you want to get out of yourself and your presence online. But you on your own, that would just be an advert. The other part of this is the market, for want of a better word, the audience. Um, and the audience is made up of all different kinds of people. So it's not about when you build an online presence, it's not just about thinking, who am I? What do I want to say? What am I about? It's thinking about the recipient of those messages or the in fact, let's not call them a recipient. Let's call them a, some, a res potential responder to those messages. What drives them? What, what motivates them? What makes them tick? And what do they need from you? And what do you want them to get from you to get what you want? Does this make sense? Cool. Um, and when you're thinking about those people, and we'll, we'll come back to them in a moment, what is their relationship to classical music? Some audiences, it's, it's very important to remember that not everybody sees the world through the same lens as you. Lots and lots of the people that you might want relationships with may know a lot less about classical music than you. And somebody who does have a music degree, that, that is my background. I've worked in classical music a lot. Even I find a lot of the way that classical musicians present themselves as quite alienating. Um, I'm not saying that about you. In front of me, you will look like gorgeous people who I want to be friends with. But there, there is a, sometimes it's easy not to see how you come across through the lens of somebody who hasn't got a music background. We'll all talk about pieces of music that we love, thinking that the composers are really famous. And I'm not suggesting for a second you dumb down. I'm just saying, make sure you're conscious and aware of the knowledge level of the person that you're speaking to so that you don't alienate them. Um, I was running a copywriting workshop for the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama yesterday, and we were looking at some examples of marketing copy for classical music concerts. And one of the pieces of that someone showed um, said um, it was about a Chopin Etude concert. I think all 27 of Chopin Etude were being performed side by side in a concert. And the comment said, I won't name the pianist, blah, blah, the natural choice for this concert. And 10 out of 10 of the people in the room had never heard of this pianist, even though I think they're fairly famous. And it made them feel quite excluded because when it said this is the natural choice, it made them feel, if I haven't heard of them, then I don't feel like I'm meant to be there. And somebody else said, I don't know what Chopin's etude are. Um, and to us, we might think that they're among the most famous parts of the piano repertoire, but just just be aware of that, I think. Um, but we'll come back to this, the, the how to be a muso without being a muso. <laughs> um, we'll come back to that later. Um, but one thing I would say, I'm going to start with talking about you. But just before we move on to you and how you want to come across, I want to point out something that's blatantly obvious. When I talk about the people that will be in this relationship, so it'll be two or more parties, you and somebody else, you have something in common with them that we know before you even decide who they are, which is that you are both human, okay? So don't forget to be human. 
these people, even if they are the chief executive of the CBSO or a conductor of one of the world famous orchestras or the controller of BBC Radio 3 or whoever they are, they are human beings doing jobs, going to work in organisations. They don't necessarily feel like they're a big corporate thing. They feel like a human. Like I'm, the, I'm lucky I have a really great job. I'm the director of audiences for Ron Bear, as I've, I am very much just Joe. And I don't want somebody to treat me in a kind of really formal, um, overly um, highfalutin, arm's length way. I want people to speak to me on a level as me, as Joe, as a person. Um, and I think when you use a lot of formal language and and are, you might think you're being professional, but it actually can come across as a little bit insecure. It can come across that you're hiding behind a kind of either corporate or even an academic facade. And I think that's something just to be really aware of. And, and I, I labor this point because you might do it and you're absolutely not insecure and you're absolutely not trying to hide behind, behind that facade. You just not, might not be quite conscious that that's how you're coming across. You'll be amazed how identical so many musicians' profiles are. When I look at it as a first language English speaker, there's like a whole raft of overused words that are on almost every musician's profile, but they will be obviously be different in your different languages and the different um, contexts that you're working. But we'll we'll have we'll come back if Helen, if you can remind me to come back to that if we don't get to it. Um, so. Just to summarise, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a deep dive into the how into what do we need to think about about us um, and and how we're going to present ourselves. But we, before we do that, is everybody happy with that sort of broad concept? We're trying to broker relationships, not market, not advertise ourselves. And there are always more than one set of people in the, any relationship. So understanding us and understanding the person who we're trying to broker the relationship with is key. There's, there's, it's, it's that simple. I could almost stop there and go, that's all you need to do. You need to find out about the audience. You need to understand about yourself. Boom, the rest will follow. But we will dig into those things. Is everybody happy with that starting point? So let's start with you. Um, I've only just met you. So um, like I said, you all look like lovely people that I would like to be friends with on the surface of things. Um, I am going to make an assumption that you all play your instruments incredibly well. You wouldn't be doing what you do if you didn't. You're Well, here we go. There's an example of the most overused word in the world when it comes to classical music. You are all world class artists. I would just whatever the equivalent to that is in each of your languages. Uh, my recommendation would be just to step away from the term world class because everybody says it, so I don't believe any of you. I mean, I believe you, but I, whenever I see world class, I think, well, that's, yeah, whatever, that's just white noise. Everyone says that. Every single arts organisation that's, art, that's applied for funding in the UK has written to the Arts Council to say, because we're world class. Almost every theatre brochure or website somewhere on there says this is world-class theatre. I don't believe you. It's, it's hyperbole. So it's that kind of thing that, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm getting distracted. Um, you are all world-class musicians. I'm gonna say that about you, but you're gonna need to think about better ways of saying that. But as well as playing amazingly, because we've already got one, two, three, four, five people on the screen in front of me who all play amazingly. And some of you play the same instruments as one another. We've seen, we've got quite a woodwind. Oh no, Dante is not, is Dante here? No, I thought we had two, two horn players. So then you have no competition now. You're all right. Um, but we but we have um, people in front of me who all play, you are all world-class. What is gonna make you different from each other and from the millions of other musicians that I might be interested in working with. Um, what makes you interesting? What makes you noteworthy? What do you bring to the room? Why do people like you? Why should people like you? But not just, look, well, because I'm really nice, but what are your causes? And who are you? How do you want to be seen? 
Because I'm guessing if you want to cut through and make a difference and be noticed, you don't want to be seen as a person in concert dress, just like every other person in concert dress who performs sublimely well and that's it. Because there's a lot of those people. There's a lot of people like that out there. It's the other things about you that you're that you're willing to bring to the party that are going to make you stand out and make you make you different and make you special. Like I said about Simon Sinek saying, use inspire people to connect with you. I connect with artists and I follow lots of artists online because I think because they inspire me, they motivate me. I love music because I believe that music and for me, especially classical music, has the ability to inspire me to make me see the world differently to give me um cause to want to move the world forward it, it changes how i see the world it makes me want to make the world a better place and i connect with the artists that i see have their own sense of cause they stand for something they have a position they have a personality um what kind of image do you want to protect project and have a think about what is ma what matters to you beyond the music? What is what makes up you, and how much of that are you willing and comfortable to share? For those of you who I've been on your Instagram earlier today, I was really pleasantly surprised. I see young people living their best lives. Music is in that life, but I see your fun. I see your personality. I see your friends, and and you don't necessarily want to give your whole life away. But what I was really pleased to see was what I would call authenticity. Um, and authenticity, I'm going to say, is vital. You can decide how much you want to keep back and how much you want to share, but don't try and put on a personality or, or a costume that is not yours. Wearing a fake personality is exhausting and it will really, really show. You can tell the artists that are really authentic. I, I could pick hundreds of artists I can think about who I think stand out. I think Jess Gillum is a standout example of this. Um, she is so much herself and she she makes me, I mean, I'm not particularly interested in saxophone music. Am I allowed to say that? But I, she, she inspires me. She cares. She's into um, discovering new music. She matters to me. She matters. To me, she matters. I've never met her. She's exciting. She's fun. I want to be part of the Jess Gillum club. I want to, she's she's sort of creating a fan base around her. And that's because she's really projecting her personality really successfully. She's deciding how much of her life she wants to share. And this is when we come into thinking about whether we want a separate profile for our professional work, a separate profile for our personal work and whether there's a bleed between the content that will go on those. We can have a chat about that because you all have that. That's a very personal decision. What I'm ultimately talking about, and forgive me because this sounds so marketing, is you are a brand. Think about yourself as a brand. And when I think about brands, I don't think about a nasty big corporate machine. I think about a brand means uh, it's something... It's a person that is clear about their promise. So I think of a brand as a promise. Um, a brand, whether it's a company, uh, Ron Bear is definitely a brand. We are a dance company with a clear promise, um, with a clear purpose. We're absolutely confident about who and what we're for. And we're unequivocal about that. And it means that if I, we communicate consistently, and I don't mean you have to play the same pieces all the time, it'd be really boring, but you always are true to your brand. It's much easier for people to understand what they're getting into with you. You're, you're, it's very clear what you are. I understand what I'm buying into and I get a sense of who you are and I keep having that reinforced each time I interact with you or each time I see you present yourself. By consistent, as I say, I don't mean you have to do the same thing all the time, but you're constantly, you're deciding what matters to you and you're bringing that to, to the party. And I, as the recipient of those messages or the potential engager, understand what that is. Before we talk about your brands and whether you're comfortable being a brand, which you're going to have to get comfortable with, um, I'm going to deliver the big blow, but I think it's quite a liberating one. Okay, this is the bit where I have to say, no brand is loved by everyone. 
just get comfortable with that because I see arts organizations in particular across the world claiming that they are for everyone and they are kidding themselves yes the arts is for everyone yes music is for everyone yes classical music can be for everyone but no one provider of that is for everyone the person that tries to be for everyone will be not loved by anyone and will be not minded by most people but no one's going to get really into that slightly boring sitting on the fence hoping not to upset any one person and at Rombert, i keep using this as an example where we're a small we're a dance company we're incredibly clear that we're not for everyone and we're really at peace with that and my gosh it's so liberating because we know who we are and what we're for we are for brilliant and daring people people who want to show up people who want to push themselves and people who want to move the world forward and if you're one of those people we will support you We will never exclude you because of your previous experience, because of your background, because of your ethnicity, because of your gender identity, because of your sexual, sexual, sexual identity, your sexuality, your wealth. None of these things will be a reason to be excluded from Rombert, but your attitude might be. So we're really comfortable. For example, if you're not interested in helping create an anti-racist society, Rombert not for you. If you're homophobic, Rombert, definitely not for you. If you're not interested in looking after our planet and its people, Rombert's probably not the dance company for you. These are things that are diversity and inclusion, for example, they are central to everything we do. Um, But by having such a stance, we're definitely not for everybody. We will divide people. And, 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 you know, people who like dance, who don't feel like, showing up and pushing themselves and moving the world forward that's fine we're not going to make you but if you want that we will be so good at it and we'll be so exciting and so rewarding and you'll get so much motivation inspiration ambition and belief from us we'll relentlessly deliver that to you if that's what you want so that's what I'm talking about I'm not saying that's the personality you have to have but I would say have the confidence to Articulate yourself, decide yourself out loud what your personality is, what you stand for, Um, have a voice, have a stance, have an opinion, have a personality, have a style. And don't be afraid of that. Go for it. Not everyone will love you. Get over it. If they don't love you, that's their problem. But the people who love you will really follow you, be into you, engage with you and want more of that. Let's have a chat about that. We'll go on to the audience in a moment because that's a whole other thing we need to think about. I think it's really important. I, I think that as brands, it's too easy to say, well, I'll just find out what the audience wants and I'll be whatever they want. That's called being a people pleaser. It's not very effective. I think the most important thing is you work out who you are, what matters to you, what is important to you, how much of yourself are you willing to give, how much of yourself are you willing to share? What is the thing about you that is the most infectious? And you and your peers and your friends and your colleagues can help you work this out. When you persuade, here's a good question. When you persuade your friends to go on an adventure, to go on a mission, why do they choose to come with you? What is it about you that compels people to get involved in your schemes? Um, If by doing you, if by being you and doing you to the most extent, you could actually affect change in the world, like significant change, what would you want that change to be? Because that says a lot about you. If I could affect change in the world, I would make the world more inclusive. I would want more equality. I would want access for people who want it to all the things they want. I would want, I, I won't go on, you, you, you get into know me a bit. Um, what's the change you'd like to see? What's your superpower? What are you here for? I'll give you an example of an artist who you should follow to um, see this in action who is actually a dancer. His name is Musa Motha, um, M-U-S-A-M-O-T-H-A. He is on Instagram relentlessly. He is one of our dancers at Rombert, but follow him. Um, Musa is an amputee um, and is the first amputee dancer. So he has one leg 
um, and dances with crutches, um, sometimes with only one crutch, often with two crutches in Rombert, and is an absolute inspiration to us, to all of us, to our dance, to the rest of the dancers and to the rest of the world. He got through to the final of Britain's Got Talent, um, and his Instagram went nuts at this point. So Musa is- definitely knows he's a brand. We talk about this over coffee really confidently and really comfortably and his brand is about motivation and you might find some of how he presents himself it's it, it's so inspiring he um knows what works for his audience and we'll talk about audiences in a moment but um he has a thing that he says often which is he takes the world impossible and turns it into i'm possible the reason i mention him is because he's an example of somebody who repeatedly says the same things and that is what a brand does, is you don't worry about saying the same things or sit. I was talking to a somebody on Instagram who's actually in like home styling, not, not our area particularly, but she's successfully grown her follower base really, really far and rapidly. And one of the things I've noticed she does is post the same content. She'll rehash reels, she'll recut um, videos and use it and it gets tons and tons and tons of engagement and what both she and Musa are doing is being consistent they've they've decided what their thing is they've decided what their message is they've decided what mission they're on they are relentless and determined and people love it I feel like I've just done a bit of a rant so I want to talk to you now about what your superpowers are who like has anybody is anybody while I've been talking thinking oh well the fact that I'm particularly passionate about that should I bring this in to my profile so you're absolutely right marketers in a commercial sense let's say I'm a marketer of shoes um my job is to do market research and find out what kind of shoes people want then I will promote those shoes to the people that want them. So I've done my market research and it turns out everybody wants shoes with a pink bow on the front because they've just seen the Barbie movie and a little kitten heel. So I produce the pink bow shoes with a kitten heel and I take them to market because that's what I found out everybody wants. I am now an arts organization with a cause, an artistic vision, a mission, and I want to perform Czechoslovakian opera. This is what I care about. I'm particularly interested in Janacek and the way that Janacek worked. I don't know why I fit this. I'm hoping I can c- continue this thread. <laughs> um, not necessarily the best example, but I haven't gone to market and said, what do you want me to perform? Because I'm slightly afraid they'll say Mozart opera or they won't say opera, they'll say musicals. And I won't any longer be an opera company presenting the work I want to pre- present. I'll be putting Les Mis on for the rest of my life. So there's a difference between arts organisations and commercial marketing. We know what we want to do. We know what we want to be. We believe in us, our stuff, our product and the change we want to make in the world. Then let's go find people that also want that. So let, that's why I was saying, let's think about ourselves first. That I have to say, it, there's a really hilarious thing in the back of my mind. I'm saying, should I say this out loud? I think I should. Hilariously, a lot of my background is in market research. And so I spent 10 years of my life saying the most important thing is to listen to the audience. And I'm going to, I stick by that. But I would also say before you listen to the audience, figure out and determine who you are. And then let's find an audience for that. Because you want, I'm assuming all of you want, but you you wouldn't have got this far in your music careers if you weren't passionate about the art. You're not just doing it to make money because spoiler alert, you might not. Um, it's not, it's not, if you wanted to make money, there are other careers you could have gone into. But am I allowed to say that? You, you're, you're aware. Um, so I think in, it, you, it would be valid to say I'm going to find out what's the most popular thing and what the audience wants and go and do more of that. And I think we could also reflect on our choices once we look at the audience. But I think we start from the starting point. I want to be this. I want to do this. And this is what I want to put into the world. Now I need to work out how to connect that to some people. And we may need to modify. We may need to change how we present it. But in my practice in 30 years of working in the arts and a lot of consultancy in theatre, I've never, ever told an artist what to put on the stage. 
I've always said, let's see what you're putting on the stage. Let's work out why that matters to people and let me find people to connect that to. And I wouldn't dream, Benoit, our artistic director is amazing and often asks our opinion, but I wouldn't dream of suggesting it's up to me, the choreographers we work with or the art that we produce. That is an artistically led choice. I mean, you may not feel comfortable. This is like all quite new. I'm saying, hey, welcome. My name's Joe. What's your brand? That's quite a big question. Um, but does anybody feel like sharing any thought, even if it's just sort of sort of working thoughts, like it's occurring to me, it, like, for example, this won't be it. I'm actually a, I'm actually a, a triathlon racer and I wonder whether that's relevant or I actually work in a women's hostel. Is that relevant? Are there, is there anything you're thinking about whether there's a part of your the rest of your life or your personality that's relevant to this? Uh, I play a bassoon. So, um, yeah, sometimes I wonder, like, maybe more uh, some instruments like violin, piano, they have a bit more like um, social media resonance, let's say. Like, I would say that more people are looking for um, interesting point of view about the this instrument and uh, I don't know. Uh... Well, I think you've got a lot of opportunity there as a bassoonist um, because it's an instrument that people know less about. It's an interesting looking instrument. It's got an interesting history. It can do incredible things that people might be quite surprised by. Um, I was listening to Radio 3 the other day and I forgive me, I don't remember the name of the bassoonist, but they introduced a bassoonist that was going to play something and I was like wow I did not know the bassoon could do that and it was it was exciting I think there's a real opportunity to be the to be a bassoonist and to, and to have fun with that to show people that to take people on an adventure if that's your personality I can't put a personality onto you but maybe take inspiration from look for other people that stand out. The Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment, you're probably familiar with them as a period instrument band. Um, in my head, I can see a picture of a bassoonist in their marketing as well, but I might have made that up. Um, but look around and see how your instrument is shown by other artists in a standout way, rather than I would, I think the bassoon, I think you've got an opportunity there. I think um Francisca, you're a violist, is that right? Yeah. So I think you also have a fun opportunity. You're the stringed instrument that people don't know about. So can you have some fun with that? In fact, Jacobo, are you an oboe player? Is that right? Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. But all of you, does any of you play anything standard? Have we just pick the people with the really exciting instruments. All of your instruments are exciting. It's a matter of finding them exciting. Joe, so perhaps because Francisco is one of the musicians who's actually sent through um, some marketing materials, perhaps we could we could have a look at at that um, from an unusual that, instrument perspective, from the viola you perspective. Uh, it's basically a quartet that it was founded in the university where I play, and now we are starting to have a lot of concerts. So we thought about creating our social media platforms it was also my entrepreneurship project and this is the building up the website so it's still like a bit in the beginning and discovering what the followers like and everything we tried also some reels but yeah <laughs> so that's you've that's a brilliant thing you're doing already that is seeing what resonates with the people that are following you we i, I said earlier that reels are everything reels are what get us so much engagement um but it you're right is to play around and see what gets most engagement i'm intrigued in terms of reaction between on the top the, the row of pictures at the top here um the one in the middle compared to the one on the right which got more likes or interaction it was the middle one but i yeah. think it was it just looks more professional. However, the other one, it was about the concert that I think it was more important than. Yeah. No, the reason I asked is, and I, I wouldn't, you said it looks professional. I wouldn't, that, that may be important to you. I just thought it looked a lot more fun. You looked, I could see your personalities. 
you were having fun it was yeah the one where you're standing I think you're in like what looks like quite sort of formal stately home sort of situation with a harpsichord or something behind you to yeah. me that looked at, but I'm saying it, it depends on who we'll talk about audience in a second depends who your audience is to me that looked like standard classical music photo yeah whereas the one with the four of you and you've got another one here I can see with the four of you with your heads on the floor yeah I love I love that image and in fact the one with the where you're all around the cello this shows me a quartet that are really bonded and are having fun and are um I feel like there will be a personality to the concerts I feel like you don't take yourselves too seriously but you've got nice photographs so you are you are serious compared to the ones where you're standing in a concert hall room there's something of just yeah it's not wrong or bad it's just it's, it could be interchanged with any other string quartets literally superimposed onto that picture and I think thinking about how you that, that picture of you with um the, which has got 1612 that's a great photograph how was that taken out of interest was that done with the photographer or was that done yeah and the ones where you the ones on the left here that was done with someone's iphone or equivalent presumably yes it was preparing for the photo shoot <laughs> yeah oh cool yeah um <laughs> and i think both are absolutely leg legitimate i don't think i wouldn't suggest you'd be amazed the amount of content that we make using at my social media coordinator's name is annabelle i'll refer to her she uses her iphone to do so much of our content so much of what you see the Ron Bear as a professional company putting out is done on a phone. Don't spend a fortune. We make our trailers in-house. So and certainly that's also something that as as all the musicians here will be aware, that's something that Maria does for us. And that was a complete game changer for me. It's thanks to Maria, who's joined us here, um, that I realised how much could be done on a phone. I don't know. If, Maria, would you like to come in on that? Yeah. Is Maria with us? Yes, I tried to capture the spontaneous part of the youngest member of our orchestra, the spontaneous emotions and everything which make made the orchestra feel more real. Yeah, exactly that. So um, this is our strategy at Rombert as well. And our strategy is um, we don't want a customer base, we want a fan base. And so what we do is, yes, we have production images of our dancers performing stuff on stage in costumes, etc. But when we're on tour, I love to show content of the dancers visiting, eating. So some of our content that had the best engagement, this sounds so silly, but when we're in Cardiff in Wales, there's a traditional um cake called a Welsh cake in Wales and I set the dancers a challenge to make content involving a, a Welsh cake it's like a little competition and we put it on social media and we've we've done on pancake day we've done pancakes being flipped we've done sit in fact our Halloween content was really good fun we did some fun stuff on Halloween just gone and it gets really great engagement and this is our dancers being shown to be humans because most of the time when you do what you do when you perform you come across as so unbelievably superhuman that in a way that's hard to relate to I can't relate to you, you when you perform so amazingly I, I kind of now want to connect with you as a person because I'm in awe of what you do so being prepared to show both sides of you showing yourself on tour off stage out of concert dress I think is really helpful um, if you look at Nikki Benedetti, she's another person who does this really well. Yes, you'll see pictures of her meeting the late Queen. Yes, you'll see pictures of her in amazing frocks um, in concerts. But you will also see her in her jeans and T-shirt doing what she's doing. Um, that's not to say she's merging her personal and professional profile. It's that she's choosing to show her real self in her professional profile. So I would completely agree, Maria, with, with your approach there to try and show what we just refer to as BTS, behind the scenes, um, as well as part of what you're doing. Do people feel comfortable doing that? Is that an issue for anybody? Uh, in general, they were comfortable because actually everybody was very happy when I appeared with the camera around. So especially because it's about young people. Yeah. The audience maybe was a bit different, but in general, 
the people were like waving or like made a very happy reaction when I I was around. So nice. Um, did we want to have a look at somebody else's? We also have Sophia's Instagram. Shall what? Shall I put that up, Sophia? Yeah, I want to see your crazy yeah. soon uh, feet. There's one of Maria's photos done on a phone. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, that's another story. Okay. Would you like to talk us through this, Sophia? Uh, yes, that's my, just my personal uh, profile. And I mostly post things about uh, bassoon. Uh, then there are some older, but really in the past. <laughs> and um, let's say I, I, I was thinking maybe to have also private profile, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, and a more professional one, but actually I, I prefer to have that uh, mixed and um, I just uh, I live in Italy on the seaside so a lot of maybe pictures uh, that I put like uh, stories are like about where I live um, and, uh, and then also I go to play mostly in Italy like in Venice uh, Florence so being a professional musician but also like yeah. Um, and here we can see, yeah. Yeah. We can see where you visited, we can see the art that you like. I think it could be really interesting to deliberately explore that, as in curate that quite a lot. So you're obvious, I can tell from this that you're interested in art and design. Um, I can tell this you like going to interesting, beautiful places. Oh, there's some an old manuscript. Yeah. Uh, you've got a really kind of art, oh, that lovely window. You've got an arty, you like taking arty pictures of your instrument. You've got an arty kind of eye that we've got you in the fountain. I would try and really deliberately curate that. So how you could have some real fun with it. It's interesting, I think you're probably going quite far back here. Um, but start to think about, well, if I'm going to have a mixture of music and art, how do I, how am I going to mix those up? How am I going to deliberately make sure I'm, I've got a balance of them? What am I going to include? What am I not going to include? How am I, what's my curatorial stance on this going to be? I would say you on your Instagram come across as quite serious. Um, I don't know whether, which, which is absolutely fine. Um, there's yeah, no I, I mostly post uh, like on uh, stories more. Yeah, okay. I, mean, or I like football as well. So uh, okay. <laughs> yes. so that's a, that's a surprise. That's an interesting and surprising thing about you, which I think makes you relatable and appealing. And you know, being different is really good. I'm saying being different because classical music environment isn't rampant with people that are into football. I'm a massive football fan, so hello. Okay, that's uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so you so you come across as very elegant and very considered and very artistic and I think therefore yeah rather than trying to say well I need to be fun and wild and crazy if that's not you then I would say well let's let's let me really work out how I can be really like that but be like almost exaggerate it more and have more curated artistic content and have a position on this have favorite artists have things you're interested in make that part of a sort of a rounded personality um, but I do think again, I mean, these are you you have friends and people that you are with, but there's a couple of pictures here where it's okay to have a few of them, but like the previous one, the pictures of um a group of musicians standing in a concert hall just do look a little bit like a group of musicians standing in a concert hall, <laughs> and which is fine to have a few of those, but just being careful to um that your tile doesn't look like a grid of standard music in a concert hall. So be aware of when you're when you're when somebody's visiting your profile that they're seeing like if we if you pause there or keep going up a little bit there there's quite a lot that are similar so just be aware of that how that looks and it, it probably is something you need to go away and have a think about which is what's my thing what's important to me besides music what what, what do I want to share I would suggest if you have something which is like a cause or a passion or like I said, for me, that equality, inclusion and diversity is a massively important thing to me. It might be that feminism is a thing that's really, really important to you, whatever that is. Think about what those things are and be and whether they're something you would start to champion, because that makes you um, that makes you matter, makes people 
interested in you and that people who have a common view of the world will be drawn towards you because they go yes yes that person is fighting for that cause yes that person that cares about this thing yes I really like Sophia because I love art too and it means it's a thing to connect with um which gives you a kind of stops you being just like I say just another musician, musicians are amazing, but stop you being identical like one another. So those are the questions I suggest you ask yourself about yourself and think about yourself through the lens of being a brand. Have a look at some artists that you think do that. Um, as I said, look at Musa, look at um, Jess, look at um, Nicola. You'll have artists you know you think do that really well. But as I said before, there are at least two people in this relationship. You don't want to, it's not just a an online advert. Um, so the next question you're going to need to ask yourself is, who is it you most need to connect with? So why are you doing this? What's the outcome you want to have? Because it may be venues. It may be like concert venues. It might be promoters. It might be, if you're a teacher, it might be people that will hire you as a teacher. Is that schools? Is that students? Is that universities? Is that conservatoires? Um, it might be that you want to get auditions. It might be that you're trying to look interesting to people who book gigs. I'm trying to think of the other audiences you might have. The, the wider public, the general wider public who might um, buy your recordings, book tickets to see you perform in concert. And actually, although you may often think that that's a sort of far reaching, long down the line thing to consider, don't forget that if you're a venue promoter or a gig booker and you're thinking about gig booking an artist, you kind of want to know that that artist will connect with the wider audience because you've got to sell the tickets. Or if I'm a record label and I'm thinking about who I want to work with, can I see that person selling recordings? So I think thinking about the wider public is relevant. Um, is and, and the other one might be, is it funders? Because some of this might need some research um, because your next question will be, once you've identified who your audiences are, what do they care about? I don't mean, do they like you or not like you? Like what's, what's important to them? What matters to them? Is it that, it, you know, what are the aspects to you and what you offer that will make a difference to their decisions? What are they like? What, as I said before, what is their background? What is their understanding of classical music? Um, what will feel relevant and resonant as opposed to alienating to them? What's their knowledge level? What do they need to know? And it doesn't mean that you have to tell them explicit facts. It can be that they're making intuitive assumptions by looking at the pictures you're posting, by seeing the things that you're saying, they're making a set of assumptions about you intuitively. Um, what's gonna resonate with these different people and what will convince them that you are there to meet their needs? But of course, the answers to those questions could be quite different depending on which audience you're trying to market to to use a technical, to use that word. So is it that primarily you're wanting this profile to reach venues, promoters, gig bookers? Is it primarily you're wanting to attract the attention of funders? Is it primarily your peers and other musicians? Is that is that what would serve you best? Um, is it people that you might teach or people who might hire you to teach? Or is it ultimately the wider public? So I think you need to make some decisions about which are the priorities and then you can answer the questions about what are they like? What do they need? What will respond? What will they respond to? And as I said before, remembering that not everybody sees the world through the same lens as you do, because almost all of them are not professional musicians. And so your relationship to music and your repertoire and your instrument, I think it's it's funny that you said, Sophia, but I play the bassoon, that's difficult. Like, no, you play the bassoon, that's the coolest one. Like you've seen that through the lens of somebody who's lived with the bassoon for your whole life. I look at you going, she plays the bassoon, that's so cool. So think, remember, I think we often sit inside ourselves looking out at the world and going, I wonder how I can be interesting to the world. Maybe a bit of an exercise of putting yourself in the shoes of these other people and imagining how you might come across and looking at you from their perspective.
So which of those different groups of people do you think are going to be most important to you for your online profile? Who, who is your online profile for? I think for, for now, not for the future, but for now, uh, for me, um, I want uh, that some musician or produce, uh, producer or concerts uh, could see what I'm do and uh, invite me uh, for some project or stuff like that. For me, it's, it's, it's the most important now. Yep. And what kind of projects would you like to be invited to be involved in? What if you're wanting to connect, you're wanting musicians and producers to connect with you, which what kind of musicians and producers would you like that to be? In your dream, who would you collaborate with? Uh, I don't know a lot of things. <laughs> Orchestra, chamber music projects, or um, some projects in in a hospital or oh, okay. you know, stuff like that. So what School, may- so if you're thinking about the doing something in a hospital, for example, mm-hmm. why why would that be an attractive opportunity for you? Why would you like to do that? Oh, because I, I like the fact to bring music in some space they, with people who can't go to concert. Or... Okay, I already love you. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's in the, this, so the, this is a brand emerging. So you are not just a world-class musician you are also somebody who is passionate about giving music to people who can't go to music that makes you such uh I I, that makes me warm to you straight away and the people who want to do the projects like that the people who care about the people who can't get to music concerts will want to work with somebody who cares about that. So I want to see on your profile, I want to get a sense of somebody who cares about those people that don't ordinarily get to see music or hear music. And I want to see you being excited about the idea of performing in in unconventional places, that you're going to transform experiences for people, whether they're in hospital, in school, in prison, wherever that might be. And that that is a that's a mission. That is a cause that I can get behind. I'm actually genuinely thinking I'm going to follow you because I want to see what you do and I want to, I'm behind you. That's something I share. I care about that too. So that's what I'm talking about, about having a position and a stance on something. That's brilliant. I want to encourage you to do that so much. I just listening to this just now, I found that an incredible sort of mini process a way to think about this question of who do I want to reach my audience and how that you start with with your your main reason and then you think okay which are the ones I most want to do and then why do I want to do that and then you've arrived if I understand you correctly at your authentic reasons and then you can communicate those reasons because if I am trying to organize a gig in a hospital I've got all of these musicians in front of me they're all really equally good at playing but I want to hire the one that cares so I need to see that about you. Do you know what we're actually doing here? We're almost reenacting the book I mentioned before by Simon Sinek called Start With Why. What Simon's entire premise is for this book is always start with why you want to do things. What's the purpose behind it? What's your personal why? Find your personal motivation and spend your life trying to achieve that. Um, and when you start, when you've got your why, and you may have otherwise too, but you you have you've described to me a, a why about it was when you said I want to take music to people into places who can't go to the concerts. That's powerful stuff. You might think that's normal because you have other friends who feel the same, but from out from the outside world, that makes you a really special person. That is exactly as as um, Helen says, that's the process of saying, well, what is it I care about? What do I want to do? Who do I want to connect with? And it is about finding your why and then think about how do I present that why? Because you could just put lots of pictures of yourself um, with your instrument. You play cello, is that right? Yeah, with your cello, beautiful. You have an advantage, beautiful instrument there. Um, looking like a musician who plays the cello and da 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 but you've got there's something much more interesting here. You're a musician who cares about reaching people. You care about that. And let me ask you further questions. You want to take music to people in places who can't otherwise see the hear the music. Why is that? What what do you think the music will help? What will the music do? 
it could uh, give, uh, I don't know, uh, more life in this kind of places. For example, I played in a, in a prison. Um, I, I could feel when I was playing, I could feel uh, life in the eyes on, on the face of the, the people who live almost without life uh, during. Yeah. People who might not have hope, you're giving them hope. You're, mm -hmm. you're seeing the light in their eyes. This is this is like this is because you have a belief in the power of music. Now, I have a fear that lots of musicians assume that's what everybody knows and understands and so don't bother to say it out loud or like when I said why would you do that you looked a bit, a bit me a bit like well because obviously I'm going to change their lives don't you know that but I, I do because I believe the same as you believe but the why that needs spelling out I think you've got a really exciting brand what we'd call brand proposition here and it doesn't preclude you from doing other kinds of work it just means that when you're the person on the stage doing the other concert you're also that wonderful person that went into the prison you're also the wonderful person who cared about the people in hospital I want to go to your concert at the Royal Albert Hall because you're the person that did the other things there's lots of cellists I can go and see but I want to see you because you're a better person and I don't mean that sound worthy. I, I mean this. That's that's what I'm talking about, bringing a, a brand and a cause and standing for something out. And what I would also say is I did, um, last time I spoke with frontrunners, I did a sort of appraisal of various musicians' websites. And I often found on their websites little things like this, but they were buried at the bottom. So there would be three paragraphs of text saying, this is where I went to school. This is where I did my first degree. This is where I did my second degree. These are all the orchestras I've played with. These are all the conductors I've been under the baton of. Oh, and by the way, I have went to fight in Ukraine or something like that. Like really, like the, the things that make you so different were in the footnotes. And I'm sorry to tell you that 99.9% .9 of people won't read first past the first sentence on your website. So, and, and I've even found that with like quite well-known musicians, like, because I was doing it for this, I found out interesting things about, I was, I was just Googling musicians saying, I wonder what they say, I wonder what they say. And I found out because I was forcing myself to read their websites, quite a lot of musicians had quite interesting causes that they cared about, quite interesting things to say, but only because it was my job did I find it. So try and lead with it, try and make it central to you get some really great photos of you doing that. I think that is an incredibly, it really cuts to the heart of the matter when it comes to a successful online profile, because at the end of the day, we're not just using online profiles now, we're living part of our lives online. Yeah. And to, as you say, everyone can, someone who is passionate about what they do, someone who's an interesting and well-rounded human being, someone who's reliable, someone who's trustworthy. And that really sort of cuts to the heart of it. So um, I was thinking perhaps this would be a really good good place to wrap up because I think that is just such a helpful, helpful message. I had one more thing in support of that, actually, which is, and I can't help you, you will speak different languages, but to, there's the same principle at, at play here, which is I beg of you, try as much as you can to use a tone of voice that sounds like you as a person. I'm mean, talking when you're using words here. Um, try and sound human. Um, don't do that thing about trying to tidy your sentences up and make it sound all professional. A lot of you use the word professional and obviously I, I expect professional behavior of you in a concert hall, but try and sound a bit raw, a bit rough, a bit ready, a bit like your own personality. Think about your tone of voice so that it matches with if you're going to show some heart, some grit, some real stuff, some artistic preferences, whatever those things are, try and make sure your tone of voice matches with that and doesn't sound like a corporate monster. It is about avoiding all those overly used words. Like we've talked about world class. The in, in English, the words that get most overused in classical music are world class, prestigious, celebrated, um, innovative, unique. Um, these are all words that are, just should be struck out of our of our language. Um, Award-winning, I think I've said. Peerless is one that gets used a lot. Cutting edge. These are all 
great concepts, but because the words get used so much, they've started to lose a bit of their, um, you get kind of get the, the reader gets immunity because of the repeating of the cliches. So, so yeah. So I just want that, just wanted to support that in terms of being a person, being a real person with integrity. So I've put some of those words onto the jam board on the first, on the second board when we talk about, about the strategic big lines. Now we've arrived at this point, we have four jam boards with so many thoughts on. I'll just share my screen very briefly um, to summarise. And then, of course, we can all add our thoughts and comments. I'm just going to share that. So at the start... Just to, just to wrap up what we've been talking about today, at the start, we established that, in fact, most people are most active on Instagram and Facebook. And that makes sense because that's where the main engagement is. There's not a lot of point in talking to an empty room. So go where other people who are interested in talking with you are hanging out. Then we had a really interesting um account from joe on the strategic big lines and i think what you said joe about starting with why is so important and that has really come out through this whole session it's the so what isn't it it's why should your audience care and here we have this really interested me that you start with your you start where you have your personality and then your audience then we talked about your personal brand first, and Joe recommended to really start with this first, which is a little bit different from commercial marketing, but that's where you're going to find your authentic voice. And that's in effect your superpower. And then finally, we talked about audiences and how to bring what you is special to you to what's special to them and then connect them. And then those are your start with why, your authentic reasons. You can communicate them and you can put them first. And it shouldn't be difficult to do that because if that is your genuine why, it's what you're most passionate about. It's about being brave enough to put that out there to share it. Thank you, Joe, very much. I look forward to seeing all of your fame on social media as we go forward. I'd like to thank you all very much for coming. Thank you for sharing your Instagram accounts with us. And if you do think of any questions later, please do send them to me or to Maria. Absolutely. You can also message me on Instagram. I'm on there, but I'm not on there as an artist. So <laughs> thank you, Joe.